Good evening. Tonight, Amanda Knox is once again a convicted killer. It's the latest twist in a six-and-a-half-year saga that has transfixed people on two continents. Nearly 28 months after Knox, a college student from Seattle, was acquitted of killing her roommate during a study abroad program in Italy. Today, an appeals court in that country ruled that she is, in fact, guilty and belongs back in prison. So what happens next? Here's ABC's Neil Karlinski. Amanda Knox, 24-year-old Seattle student. Amanda! In a case with more twists than a Hollywood movie, an Italian court has once again found Amanda Knox guilty. Guilty of the murder of British roommate Meredith Kircher in 2007. This time it was an appeals court in Florence that after 12 hours of deliberations handed down the verdict. 28 years and 6 months for Knox and 25 years for her former boyfriend Raffaele Selecito. Neither of them were in court for the verdict. Amanda was in her hometown of Seattle where sources tell ABC News she felt sick as the verdict was read, saying in a statement, I am frightened and saddened by this unjust verdict. Having been found innocent before, I expected better from the Italian justice system. My family and I have suffered greatly from this wrongful persecution. This has gotten out of hand. You know, Amanda's um, upset. Uh, we were all just shocked and I think upset, but we're all ready to fight. Within hours of the verdict, Knox's parents sat down with us near their home in Seattle. Were you expecting this? No, I wasn't expecting this. Uh, absolutely not. They got it right uh, in, the in the first appeals trial where they found her innocent and allowed us to bring her home. They've gotten it wrong and they continue to get it wrong. In an interview by Guardian hey, Films so broadcast by the BBC tonight, oh, she anticipated right. a guilty verdict. It would feel like a train wreck. This ongoing saga, at times stranger than fiction, has unfolded over the past six and a half years, starting when Knox came to Perugia in 2007 to study Italian. It was just weeks after her arrival that her roommate Meredith Kircher was brutally killed. Knox and her then boyfriend of just one week, Raffaele Selecito, were soon arrested. Overnight, Knox became a murder suspect and international media obsession branded Foxy Noxy. In December 2009, they were convicted of murder after a dramatic year-long trial, a trial full of character accusations against Knox and shifting motives, but there were no eyewitnesses and no physical evidence. The prosecutor pinned his case on minute amounts of DNA found on a kitchen knife they claimed was the murder weapon, a fact that was essentially ruled out in the most recent case. In the end, Knox was sentenced to 26 years in prison. The verdict devastated her family. They made dozens of overseas trips and spent everything they had, more than a million dollars, fighting the charges. Anger, disbelief on how a judicial system could even come up with a verdict uh, like this. It's beyond me. This is completely unjust and I'm in complete shock. After a thousand hours in court, 48 months locked in prison, Knox pleaded with the court in a last ditch appeal. I'm paying with my life for something I haven't done, she said. I am not what they say I am. In a stunning move, the appeals court agreed, citing shoddy police work and a lack of forensic evidence and throwing out her conviction in an emotionally overwhelming verdict. Knox was released from prison, her nightmare seemingly over, she flew back home to Seattle. What's important for me to say is just thank you to everyone who's believed in me. She signed a $4 million book deal and told her story to Diane Sawyer. To get to it, did you kill Meredith Kircher? No. Were you there that night? No. Do you know anything you have not told police that you have not said in this book? Do you know anything? No. I don't. I wasn't there. But just as Knox was beginning her new life again, Italy's highest court overturned her acquittal last year. Well, she couldn't believe it. Um, I'm going to keep fighting this. I'm going to keep fighting this, and I'm not going to stop fighting this. That's all. The truth will come out, and that's all. In fact, one truth that is known is that this man, local drifter Rudy Gaudet, sits in an Italian jail convicted of the murder of Meredith Kircher. He's the killer. He was convicted of the crime. 
and sentenced to 16 years in prison. And I might add, with uh, good behavior, he is eligible and will probably receive daytime release this year. So while Amanda and Raffaele are being persecuted endlessly with these trial after trial after trial, the real killer is going to be out of jail. Author Douglas Preston has been following the case closely. They searched that crime scene for two months and they were not able to find one nanogram of Amanda Knox's DNA. Are you excited to see David? Uh, David. David, the statue of David. Oh. Long gone is the fresh-faced 20-year-old who originally set off for Italy with big dreams. Really looking forward to um, actually getting a place to live. Is she different? I think we're all different. Yeah, I think. Every it, single one of us. Yeah. Today, Knox lives in her own apartment and can be seen on the streets of Seattle getting coffee between creative writing classes at the University of Washington. She's scheduled to graduate this spring, but her future has once again been thrown into doubt. Italy, under an extradition agreement with the United States, has the right to ask for her to return in order to serve her prison sentence. But her American lawyer says it's too soon for that. The question of extradition is not yet in play because under the Italian system of justice, a person is entitled to a third level of appeal. Amanda will avail herself of that appeal, and we have to await what that final uh, or next stage verdict will be. But even if the conviction is upheld, extraditions to Italy are very rare. In fact, more Italians are extradited to the United States than the other way around. But tonight, Amanda Knox's parents say they are dug in for a fight that will likely last years. They plan appeals beyond the Italian Supreme Court to the European Union and elsewhere. You feel like this is purely political now? Absolutely. Not based on the facts, no. the evidence? No. Like I said, and even in closing arguments, they don't talk uh, just about facts of the case. If they did, they would have found both Amanda and Raffaele innocent. But, you know, they talk about the need to restore the police's reputation as a reason to find people guilty. You know that, that they're not looking at evidence anymore. You have gone and strayed so far away from justice that that's what we experienced today with this verdict. As for Amanda, between fighting an international legal battle to clear her name, she says she wants to write a children's book. I'm Neil Karlinski for Nightline in Seattle.